With the cost of living soaring, finding ways to save money is harder than ever before and this was the case for me when I was trying to save up enough money to make my big move to live in Japan. I was going to do everything in my power to make Japan possible and for me thrifting was one of the ways that I was able to do this. Thrift shopping has become a go-to for me to keep myself staying on budget. And as you know, when I moved to Japan, I bought all of my furniture secondhand from the secondhand stores here in Japan. So what's Japanese thrift shopping like? Well, I've done my research because I've been shopping in both Australia and Japan. Let's dive into the world of Japan's thrift shopping and see what gems we can find. So you might have remembered I bought all of my hard goods at a Japanese secondhand shop and I modified a coffee table recently. You can watch that in one of my videos. But I've been really happy with buying things secondhand and saving a bit of dollars here and there. Japanese thrift stores are known locally as furugiya or recycle shops. Japanese tend to take good care of their belongings. So a lot of the items that are offered for sale are usually in excellent condition. I was out driving the other day and I passed what looked like an absolutely falling down abandoned house. It really caught my eye because it was on one of the main river roads that I drive down. I got on Google Maps to find out exactly what this place was and it turned out it was listed as an antique store or a second hand store. So I decided to go there and just check it out for myself. I just couldn't believe my eyes when I pulled up. It really looked a bit like a junkyard, but on closer inspection, there was so much hidden treasure, treasure everywhere. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Chaney and I'm a middle-aged Australian who moved to Japan last year and bought an akia or a vacant property. In my videos, I'd like to show you what it's like from a middle-aged perspective to live and work in Japan. I'd love it if you liked and subscribed to this video and join me on this journey as we find out more about Japan together. I really couldn't believe my eyes. There was so much there. It actually felt like a treasure hunt going through all of the different things on all the shelves. And it was actually displayed really beautifully as well. I came here today not particularly looking for anything. I just wanted to have a look and see what was around. A few things were starting to catch my eye and I started thinking, you know, what would actually look nice in my house? I'm working on painting out the entranceway white, so I'm looking for something that might go on the wall and, and really be a feature of the room. I was initially thinking of painting, but I spied a couple of items here that might actually work out. This place is on two levels. The first floor has all of the heavier furniture type items and a few knickknacks. And then when you go up onto the second floor, it's broken up into different rooms. I guess this used to be a house before they converted it into a shop. So this place is called Ladybird in Wakayama and they're only open on Saturdays and Sundays and Google Maps tells me that their opening hours are 1 to 5. I've come here on a Sunday afternoon and it's a great way to spend a Sunday looking for treasure. I'm definitely going to come back here on another day because there's so much to see all at once. I don't know if I can see everything today. So I've made two purchases and I'm very excited to show you, but we're going to go home first. Now, one of the purchases, I don't know if it's going to work. 
so I'm a little bit nervous about whether it's working. I asked them if this item was working and they said, no, you're buying it as a decoration. That's why it's the price. If it was working, it would be a lot more expensive. So I'm really hoping it can be fixed or somehow work. So let's go home and see if I can sort it out. Okay, drum roll please. What did I buy? I bought a clock. <laughs> it's a clock. Yes, I'm not really into clocks or a clock person, but I thought this would just work so well in my entrance way. I envisage a bit of a sideboard or a, a shoe box and then a place to put all your keys and everything and then a clock on top. I think this might work out good once I get it all fixed up. So once I got home, I Googled the clock and it's from the Meiji Clock Company in Nagoya. Now when I googled that company it turns out that they actually closed down quite a long time ago. So I'm not sure if that makes this clock valuable or anything like that. Now how much do you think I paid? So I actually paid 3,000 yen for this clock which is in Australian dollars that's about $30. Of course, as soon as I got home, I went into lots of Googling to try and find out if this clock has any value. Not that I bought it for the value, I bought it for the looks. But I did find an auction site that was selling one very similar. Now this one looks like it's in a lot better condition than mine. And it also is in working order. So I'm really hoping that um, I can wind my clock up and get it into working order. Really? So I wound one side up and that's obviously the chime side and then I wound the other side up and the bigger hand started to tick so that must be the side that makes the clock tick. I used my spirit level app to level the clock and then I started the pendulum off. Straight away the clock started ticking. So the good news is the clock works and I just have to figure out now how to get the chimes to work at the right time. I also need to give it a good clean. Looking at the clock in the picture I found online, it shouldn't take much to clean it up and make it look brand new again. Another awesome find that I got were these copper cups. They were sitting in a corner and they looked really tarnished. So I knew with a bit of metal polish, if I gave them a scrub and polished them out, they're gonna look amazing. It just reminded me a bit of my childhood because my job at home when I was younger was to polish the brass bell. And I loved polishing that bell. It just was so satisfying to get it all shiny in the end. So I'm thinking about my childhood again and. Um, got these cups and I'm just going to enjoy polishing them up and making them look amazing. Millie's not 100% on the ticking of the clock yet, so she's going to have to get used to that one. If you're watching this and you are feeling the pressure of cost of living right now, you're definitely not alone. There are many ways to manage your savings and for me thrift shopping was a big one. Thanks for being such a great community and supporting me in everything that I'm doing. I really appreciate you and thanks so much for watching to the end. See you next week. Bye. Do you want to learn Japanese the correct way from the beginning? 
I'm a qualified Japanese high school teacher and I teach foundational Japanese using the method that was taught to me when I lived here in Japan. The course consists of guided video lessons, a fun learning app, and a workbook that you can print out and keep and go back and revise as many times as you like. Check out the website today at www.chaineyjapan.com. I'd love to have you on board.